Hello, this is PsychBoost, helping you build psychology qualification one video at a time. This video is on neuropsychology, and this 18th GCSE video will be covering neuron structure and function. The very kind support of students and teachers who donate on Patreon help me help you by continuing to make these videos and resources. A very big thank you for all of your help, guys. To join them, follow the link. For everyone, you might want to check out the free worksheet for this video and the quiz. So as usual, here are the terms on the AQA GCSE specification we're going to cover in this video. As we go through the video, they're going to be in bold red text, and you need to be able to respond to questions on all of this. So it's likely you've seen an image like this before. It's a drawing of a set of neurons. A neuron is a specialised cell in the body that transmits information electrochemically. There are three different types of neuron in this picture. The blue one is a sensory neuron. This detects information, so pressure or heat as example, and passes that information through the peripheral nervous system to the central nervous system. The relay neuron in pink detects information from the sensory neuron and can pass information to the central nervous system for processing, and it can also pass information to motor neurons. Motor neurons, drawn here in green, detect information from relay neurons and will carry this information to the muscle, making it contract or relax. Together, this collection of neurons is called the reflex arc. It allows reflex actions, the body moving quickly in response to possible danger. Let's look in more detail at the structure of the neurons. Dendrites are the extensions of neurons that detect signals sent from other neurons. The cell body, common in all cells, this contains the genetic information of the nerve cell and controls the cell's functions. The axon is a long extension of the nerve cell that allows it to pass messages on to the other nerve cells. Axons are often, but not always, covered in a myelin sheath. This works as insulation, making the electrical signal or nerve impulse travel faster. Sensory receptors on a sensory neuron are specialised dendrites that detect external stimuli like heat, taste or light. Motor end plates are at the end of motor neurons, attaching them to the muscle fibres used to activate muscles. So I've said the neurons communicate electrochemically. We need to understand that process. The important structure is the synapse. This is a drawing labelled up. I'll briefly explain the process so I can show you what the labels are. So synaptic transmission is simply how a presynaptic neuron, here in blue, converts an electrical signal into a chemical signal that is then detected by a postsynaptic neuron, here in pink. The chemical molecules released by neurons and detected at receptor sites are called neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters can be excitatory or inhibitory, more on that in a second. Neurotransmitters are released when the electrical signal, known as an action potential, reaches the synapse. Vesicles containing neurotransmitters then merge with the cell wall and release the neurotransmitters so they can be detected by the receptors on the postsynaptic cell. But that's not the end of the process. The neurotransmitters need to be taken back into the presynaptic cell. There are transport proteins to actively do this so that the synapse is ready to fire again. Now I said I'd say a little bit more about neurotransmitters being excitatory or inhibitory. The electrochemical message will only be sent on if the postsynaptic cell detects the chemical message and then fires. So, some neurotransmitters are excitatory. This means that when they're detected by the postsynaptic cell, they make it more likely to fire, and this is called excitation. But some neurotransmitters, when detected, make the postsynaptic cell less likely to fire, and that's inhibition. Now, these two processes interact, and the postsynaptic cell firing or not depends on the combination of excitatory and inhibitory processes, and this is called summation. Only if the excitatory influences are strong enough will the postsynaptic cell reach a threshold and then fire. Let's finish our discussion on the neuron by considering Hebb's theory of learning and neural growth. Your brain is constructed of many neuronal pathways. These are connections between groups of neurons. Now Hebb suggests that when we learn, our brain physically changes, creating new neural pathways. The term we give for our brain physically changing in response to experience is neural plasticity. Hebb argues that if we repeatedly use a connection, 
then that is repeated excitation. That frequent excitation stimulates the connection, making the synaptic terminal grow. Collections, or groups of neurons that fire together, are called cell assemblies. And when we learn, new neuronal pathways are formed from their synchronous firing. The more neural pathways are used, the stronger they are, but also the more efficient they become. This is a reason a task becomes easier, or performance improves, the more times the task is repeated. Let's evaluate Hebb's theory. Well, Hebb's theory can be applied to education. The ideas behind growth mindset suggest that improvements in performance are due to increased effort. This is directly supported by Hebb's ideas behind neuronal pathways becoming more efficient with use. There's also direct biological evidence. Observations under the microscope of neurons growing new connections when electrically stimulated. Biological research is performed with precise tools under careful controls, so this is strong evidence for the physical growth of neurons when stimulated. But Hebb's theory can be criticised as being overly reductionist. Effective learning is a complex problem, and can't be fully explained just by the growth of new synaptic connections. Okay, now we've covered the content, you need to be able to use that information to actually answer questions. And here are five questions I've made for you to test your skills. So, pause the video and give them a go. For those of you who support me on Patreon, I've put together a short additional video showing you how to answer these properly. For everyone else, thanks for watching, liking, subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video in neuropsychology, the structure and function of the brain.